In this video series, I'll be conducting a peer review of my brother, Ron Daltons Jr. His intriguing claims about the true location of biblical Israel. I'll begin by outlining his central premise and then share my approach. Now the speaker's premise. When I say speaker, I'm referring to my brother, Ron Dalton Jr. What is his premise? The speaker's premise is that the traditional understanding of the land of Israel, its location and characteristics may be misunderstood or misrepresented. The speaker suggests that the biblical land of milk and honey, often associated with the modern-day Middle East, might actually refer to regions in Africa, particularly sub-Saharan Africa or Central Africa. They argue that the lush, fertile landscapes described in the Bible align more closely with areas like the Congo Basin rather than the arid regions typically associated with Israel today. The speaker also challenges the historical and geographical separation created by terms like Middle East, suggesting that these are modern constructs that obscure the true connections between the biblical Israelites and African people. They propose that the Bantu people who are now spread across various parts of Africa are the descendants of the biblical Israelites and that their historical land extends into what is now considered Africa rather than being confined to the Middle East. This is his premise. My approach. In this peer review, I will critically examine the speaker's assertions. My approach begins with a thorough fact-checking from a biblical perspective, utilizing scriptural evidence to verify the accuracy of the claims made. Now, by delving into the specific passages and details provided within the biblical text, I aim to clarify the historical context of some of his mentions. Following this biblical analysis, I will present my position on the topic, but it's going to be from a scholarly historical viewpoint. This section would incorporate broader historical and cultural insights, offering a well-rounded um, perspective that considers both biblical and historical scholarship. I believe that through this balanced and analytical review, I am able to provide a comprehensive understanding or I intend to provide a comprehensive understanding of the topic, addressing not only the factual accuracy of the speaker's assertions, but also exploring the implications and interpretations of these historical events. So, with that said, let's start with this statement by the speaker about Jacob and his sons. Let's listen in. Genesis 